Welcome to another video. I'm glad to have my blackboard back um, temporarily because um, I'm going to be here for a while and then I'm going to take a journey into some familiar but strange land. Okay, I'll let you know when it happens. But let's see how to solve this problem because um, this is crazy if you don't have a calculator and you're asked to simplify this i don't know the exact value of the square root of five let alone the cube root of the sum of the square root of five and two or the difference so here you would need to employ some algebraic um, manipulations and this what i'm about to do is a general approach you should take whenever you have the cube root of a sum or a difference actually and you have conjugates under the radical sign as you can see this is the conjugate of this one because this has a plus and this has a minus and that's it that's the only difference so what should you do well we have to make some substitution we're going to say let this sum that we have be something and then we're going to give this a name and give this guy also a name and then eventually we'll get our answer let's get into it Like I suggested, let us give them names. So we're gonna call the final answer we're gonna get a C. So let me call this C. So if the total is C, then I can give this a name, give it an A, and give this a name B. So we can say that C So if we describe this as A and describe this as B, we can do all the work we want to do on the basis of A plus B is equal to C. So if A plus B equals C, what can we do with them? Well, remember that the major issue we have is this cube root sign. We don't know the cube root of this sum here because we don't know this sum here because this is a radical. So what we're going to do is try to get rid of the cube roots. And in order to get rid of cube roots, you have to cube. But we can't just cube this and cube this and then get a cube of this. We can't do that. You can only cube both sides. So what we do is we say, if we cube both sides, cubing both sides, we're gonna get C cubed equals A plus B cubed. Now a plus b cubed is the same thing as you just getting this and multiplying it by itself three times. That's hard to do. We don't want to do that. What we want to do is find a way to just individually cube this and cube this. And that is what we get from this formula. Remember the expansion, the cubic expansion of a binomial if you want to use Pascal's triangle, that's fine, but we can use this formula rather, not formula, it's just the expansion, but the easier one. When you cube anything like this, what you end up with is gonna be a cubed plus b cubed plus three ab times a plus b. That's what our c cubed is gonna be, okay? Now, you can take your time and distribute this. You'll make sure you will find out that this is what you end up because this will be distributed. This becomes 3a squared b plus 3ab squared. Those are the two terms other than a cubed plus b cubed. Now, life becomes a lot easier because what we've got here is easy. We can get everything that we see here. Well, the most obvious is this guy. What is a plus b equals c? So we know we can replace this with C. So let's do a bunch of replacements and see what we get. So here on the left hand side, we're gonna get C cubed. A cubed is when you cube this, the cube root sign disappears. So what you're left with is just two plus the square root, the square root of five. So this is two plus the square root of five. That is what A cubed is. Now what is B cubed? It's gonna be, when you cube this, this cube root sign disappears, you're gonna be left with two 
minus the square root of 5. Now we have plus 3 times a, and we said a plus b is equal to c, so I can put c here. The only thing missing is a, b. What is a, b? Well, a, b, this is a, this is b. If we multiply these two together, what do we get? Well, let's do that here. What is a, b? a, b is going to be the cube root of 2 plus the square root of 5 multiplied by the cube root of 2 minus the square root of 5. Because you're multiplying, you can put the two radicands together, you multiply them, so we have a giant cube root, and we're now going to multiply this by this. Now watch this, 2 plus the square root of 5 times 2 minus the square root of 5. Do you see that this is the difference of two squares, right? So, which is always the square of the first term minus the square of the second term. So this is actually the cube root of what is the square of 2? 4. Minus, what is the square of the square root of 5? It's 5. So what we have is basically the cube root of negative 1. What is the cube root of negative 1 written this way? Now, don't bring all the complex stuff here. We're just talking about real numbers, okay? Because remember, we've got to use a calculator to compute this. So, if we're not doing algebra, the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. So, the AB that we're still looking for in here is minus 1. So, let's say we write minus 1 in parenthesis, and this is C. So you find out that our c cubed is going to be, now let's resolve this, c cubed is going to be 2 plus 2, that's 4, plus rad 5 minus rad 5, these two cancel out, and what you have left, minus 3c. This is the equation that we need to solve to find what c is, remember the mission is to find c which is the sum of these two radicals. So if we can solve this equation and find a real value of c, or any value of c that we can find, then we're good. Let's do this. So we're gonna have c cubed. So suppose we have c cubed, we move this to the other side, we get plus 3c, and we have here, this minus to the other side becomes minus 4 is equal to 0. Now there are many ways you can solve this. You can say, I'm gonna use the rational root theorem, I'm going to try the numbers, all the factors of 4, which would be 1 minus 1, 2 minus 2, 4 minus 4. But I don't want to do that, I want to factor. So remember, we're doing factoring. And how will you factor this? Because this is not quadratic, it's a cubic function, but there's a good thing happening here. The leading coefficient is 1, and you have minus 4 here. There's a way you can combine, combine 1 and 4 to get 3, and we're going to try it out and see what happens. So we have 3 cubed, and now I'm going to replace plus 3c with a linear combination of 1 and 4, which is going to be minus, because I want to be able to do difference of two squares on this side. So what I'm going to do is write minus c plus 4c. You see, this has replaced my plus 3c. Okay, remember I said this doesn't always work, but sometimes it's just a good setting for you to do it. So here, minus 4 equals 0. So let's go. At this point, I can factor out c. If I take out c, what I have left is c squared minus 1. And here I can take out 4. I do plus 4 to c minus 1 equals 0. Now, it doesn't look like I can factor anything out. Here I have 4. I don't have 4 here. Here I have c minus 1 but I also have c minus 1 hiding inside c squared minus 1. So I'm going to write this as c multiplied by c squared minus 1 is the difference of two squares, which is c minus 1 times c plus 1. You see that? Plus 4 times c minus 1 equals 0. So now I have two terms, each of them containing c minus 1. I can factor out c minus 1. So watch this, c minus 1 times what is left. Now if I take c minus 1 out, I have c times c plus 1, so I have c times c plus 1. 
and here I have just plus 4 remaining and this is equal to 0. So clearly I have a product of two um, factors. Yeah, I know that sometimes I use the word terms and it just doesn't make any sense. So I fixed it. Factors, okay? So here we have c minus 1 multiplied by c squared plus c plus 4 equals 0. So I've distributed this c and this is what I have. Now I have the product of two factors and I get 0. Remember when two things multiply together it gives you 0 then one of them must be 0 or both of them must be 0. So in this case this is 0 or this is 0 or both of them are zeros and that's how we solve all equations all zero product equations like this. So we can say c minus 1 equals 0 implies that c is equal to 1. So one of the answers to our problem, this plus this is equal to 1. I know it doesn't look like it, it doesn't make any sense, but the answer is 1. Okay, one more. If we choose this, I know I said I don't want to do the imaginary one, but while I was resetting the board, I told myself, if I don't solve it, I'm going to get a bunch of comments complaining about why I didn't finish it. So let's just solve this. Or we're going to have, so this is one answer, c equals 1. This is the real solution, real. Okay, now I know this will not be real. Why? Because the b squared of my quadratic equation is going to be less than 4ac. So here we have, I know we're using c here, but I'm talking about the standard quadratic equation. So we have c squared plus c plus 4 is equal to 0. If we solve this using the quadratic formula, c will be equal to minus 1. That's what we're going to get with a quadratic formula. And by that, however, if you try to put this in your calculator, you're more likely to get only one answer, which is the real one. Because let's be real. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.